Hey guys, why do action scenes suck? You see all these dumb trailers with these dumb action shots and you were like, oh my god, this movie's gonna suck even though that shot's cool. Well, generally that's probably why the action scenes suck, is because they're pointless. They are there just for spectacle and really add nothing to the characters or expand the story. Many filmmakers forget that even though their scene might have action in it, it still needs to be a cohesive scene. Like, for example, a dialogue scene between a couple having a fight. And generally, the worst crime of them all is that the action isn't even that good. It's all obscured by bad camera work and weird choreography and quick edits that are hard to follow. So, what makes a good action scene? Let's start at the top. First up, good action scenes tend to show the action rather than imply it. Now, there's a reason for implying things, but we'll get to that later. But for the most part, we're talking about actually showing it with a wider shot. That let you see what's occurring. A longer movement. That helps add to the energy of the scene without obscuring it. Clear sense of space. Because it's important to understand why a character is making their decisions, whether it's from a dialogue standpoint where they're going through an emotional moment, or an action standpoint where they're trying to survive and not get killed. Or having heck, the action and the reaction in the same shot. You need to show the geometry in the space of what they're in to understand why they are making decisions or why they are in danger. Now this is expensive. It requires a lot of coordination, having a lot of people in the shot, having effects going off, timed up with actions. It's very, very difficult to film these kind of scenes, and that's actually why you don't see them very often. In fact, what many filmmakers tend to do to save money is they imply the action rather than showing it. So what does implying action mean? We're talking close-ups. We're talking obscuring the movement and hiding what's happening. We're talking about shaky angles that prevent you from understanding the movement in the shot. Now that all this conveys what's happening, you understand in your head there's a fight happening or somebody's trying to hurt another person, but you're not seeing the how and the why, and you're not seeing the movement that's dictating why they're doing what they're doing and the decisions they're making in that fight. It's certainly not as entertaining as this, because we're actually seeing the action and the reaction happening in the same shot. It's more believable. It's more impressive. Come on, Bruce, you gotta work with me. This allows us to see how the characters are thinking, what they're doing, how they're moving. You get everything in one nice package. I'm sorry. Let's get on the flip side here, though. Now, implying action, while generally used to make things less expensive, can be used to some really nice dramatic effect. And an example of implied action being really useful and dramatic is in Saving Private Ryan. When Tom Hanks' soldier hits the beach for the first time and he's surrounded by the chaos and the violence of warfare, we enter the sequence where the shutter speed drops and things get a little blurrier and we cut from moment to moment out of context. Thankfully, it's a very simple type of movement. They're going straight from the water all the way up to the top of the hill and that's it. And it all works to put us in the mindset of a soldier hitting the D-Day beaches for the very first time. A lot of people forget that an action scene is still a scene first and foremost. You have spectacle as your action, and you have your character development as your actual scene, and you want to blend those into an action scene. Generally speaking, action scenes tend to just convey that one person wants to kill another person, or they simply don't want to die and are trying to survive. So talking about emotions in an action scene is also very important. King Kong, why are the dinosaurs bouncing around? Nobody really knows. I don't think anyone's ever figured that one out. Resident Evil movies, every single single little bit of them just there's no re- we- yeah, just- you just stop playing the footage here. Realistically, the best scenes, any kind of scene in a movie, tells some sort of emotional arc for the character and reveals and unveils various elements of the plot that continues this forward momentum that makes you want to watch more. And doing this in an action scene is just as important as any other scene in a movie. So a great example of a fight scene that is more than just a fight for survival is the last fight scene in The Matrix. Now, in the scene, Neo is up against Agent Smith, and it appears they are fighting for survival. I mean, Agent Smith is trying to kill Neo in an onslaught of fists and bullets, but there's another layer to the scene. Neo has been told throughout this entire story that he is a hero, he is going to save mankind, and he's starting to question that. And he's going to discover, by the end of the scene, whether or not he is the hero, the prophesized hero that is going to save humanity from the machines. So there's this emotional undercurrent of Neo needing to prove himself and find this confidence and discover this element about him on top of just simply surviving. And that's what makes it a great action scene. It's more than just a fight. We're actually getting an emotional story and we're getting a character arc. Star Wars has some of the best action scenes ever because every single one of them is incredibly emotional. Every single lightsaber fight is not to show you how, how far down they can limbo over this other guy's swinging lightsaber. 
And so every single lightsaber fight is literally them just trying to get a grip on their emotions. I will not fight you. It's incredible. It's like, the prequels suck. Just look at this clip of how bad they're missing. So all this talk about character and emotion might make it seem like spectacle isn't important. But it is. It's extremely important. It's just as important as everything else, but it must go hand in hand with character development and story. He's the one. Now, good action has spectacle, and spectacle is visually entertaining. But without an emotional connection to our characters, we don't care. And this is actually a challenge that a lot of natural disaster films face. San Andreas, for example. And they show us cities getting torn apart and giant volcanoes exploding and wiping out chunks of the earth. It's tricky to make people care. Now, if you look at Independence Day, you'll notice that in these scenes of large destruction, these scenes of great spectacle, we actually have characters involved that we've grown to love. We have characters that we are watching and we are invested in their survival. And they put these characters in these moments so that we feel the tension. If the characters have no reason to be involved in the action and they're not emotionally attached to the outcome, well then, they don't have any reason to be there. They aren't going to learn or grow from it. And it's kind of a waste of that character's time. And of course, by extension, kind of a waste of our time. So while spectacle is great, that spectacle needs to be attached. It needs to be grounded. It needs to matter. It needs to have an emotion behind it. And when those two things pair together, as they do so rarely in films, that's when you get great action scenes. So yeah, why do action scenes suck? Well, they're hard to do. You need to have an incredible team working on set. You need to have the budget and funding behind it to pull it off. It takes patience, practice, and persistence to do good action. From a technical standpoint, there are incredible feats of coordination being captured on film. On top of that, there's a whole layer of storytelling and kinetic movement that is such a different realm from the technical proficiency of shooting a film that bring the two together doesn't always happen that often. So next time you go to the movies and you see an action scene that's clear and you know what's going on and it feels visceral and you care about the characters and what they are doing and there's layers to the story, savor that moment. Hopefully this video has created a bit of an appreciation for what it takes to pull off that kind of an action scene and you can come out of that film enjoying it even more than you originally would have. We are certainly constantly trying to figure this stuff out for ourselves as filmmakers. Leave a comment below. Consider subscribing. See you later. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. Why are you doing this?